So we, our guest has arrived, Dave, Dave Trahan, who is from Fight FM and also Exeter and now Plymouth DAB. But we've invited him here today as a bicyclist on the grounds that John and I were talking about uh, cycling a couple of shows ago, three weeks ago. Something, something like, like that, yeah. Something like that. And um, Dave happened to be passing and um, balanced our conversation uh, but couldn't stay. So I'll just remind listeners of what, where we were in our conversation when, when Dave last interrupted us and made his contribution. And that was, I was talking about the Hebertry Whipton experiment, which I'm not in favour of. Um, I live very close to North Street, where I would say there's more traffic and it, goes, it now goes faster than it used to, although it's a 20 mile an hour area. And um, I know of many people whose journeys are very much longer than they otherwise would be. And um, I know cyclists are very happy about the speed with which they can move through the area. And I think that's all right. I, I can see it is a through route sort of place in its, as it's positioned in the city. And the, the interest of bicycles wanting, wanting to get through it is, is fine and Devon County Council should pay attention to that. But the bicyclists on North Street, for, for example, I think are more on the pavement than they used to be. But anyway, this is just the sort of thing which John and I were talking about. Mm. And John, if I, if I just put it this way, that you, you, you are in a wheelchair and as you go about Exeter, on the pavement mostly, you you encounter bicyclists occasionally. Some of the time, yeah. So, Dave, that's that's we may we may come back with with repeats and new new interruptions to to you. But would you explain life as a bicyclist and how you see it? Uh, yeah, but I want to put it in a wider context as well, really, because um, the, the the main problem is. I, do you know what the growth of population in Exeter was last year? No idea. Six point six percent. And it's rising because the City Council are estimating that in the next 20 years there are going to be 12,000 more houses in Exeter and that in the Exeter travel to work area there will be 53,000, sorry, the ex greater Exeter area there will be 53,200 more homes. So what I'm, what I'm saying really about cycling is that cycling provides an opportunity to move quickly around the city and that the, the, the scheme that you're talking about is admirable but actually it's admirable in, in, in as much as it helps cyclists and it helps pedestrians or it ought to help cyclists and pedestrians but it's, it's part of a much much wider question that's going to need addressing because Exeter as a city is, has got a well, a 19th century structure um, built onto a Norman structure and the last time that there was any attempt to ameliorate the traffic issues in Exeter was probably 1958 when they built the inner bypass. So what I'm saying I think is that it's admirable that Exeter, that Devon County Council are providing this but actually it needs to be looked at in a much, much, much wider context. So, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that for people who live in the area that is, uh, in inverted commas, affected, uh, it's, it's going to be get worse and worse and worse in terms of the amount of traffic coming into Exeter unless something is done to actually restrict it. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm starting. Yeah, but with that, they're encouraging people not to drive cars. And if you're if you're disabled or have a disability, sometimes you need to have a vehicle. Um, um, and they they they're cutting off what would be good routes to 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 specific places for bike for for cyclists. And um, I I they. They can't abol they, they surely they, they. It's not a good idea to abolish all the traffic. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about abolishing all the traffic. What I'm talking about is cutting down the amount of traffic that is coming into the city, 
utilising in the longer term the kind of facilities that we have. For example, uh, the ra you know th this ought to be this ought to be a part of something that 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 network rail or whatever the government are going to call it in the future is actually doing. Because Exeter, unlike other large cities, does has for does have, for example, an excellent internal rail network. So, greater use of that, greater use of park and ride. And I, John, I take your point exactly about y your need to actually move around the city uh, as a wheelchair user. Mm. And there's n there's no reason at all why vehicles that are adapted to do just that shouldn't be, shouldn't have priority. But what I'm saying is, I think, that in a, in a longer term sense, it's an issue that needs a much, much wider look at than simply saying the heavy tree scheme isn't working. It might, ask, might, might be a good idea to ask the question, if it isn't working, why isn't it working? Well, yeah, that's a very good question. But the, 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 at the moment, I mean, I'm, I'm going to just sort of say what some people think and what other people think because there's there's a lot of disputed facts, but the the nature of the consultation so far, it isn't appreciated by uh, by everybody and not appreciated by most of the people I I talk to. But uh, but <laughs> I'm sorry, but a lot of that is to do with the fact that Exeter isn't a unitary authority, and so has to rely on decisions that are being made by Devon County Council. Devon County Council are under immense strain in terms of their budget. Uh, we only have to look around at the cuts that are being, being made everywhere to realise that in fact probably traffic into Exeter is one of the least of their problems because they have statutory duties to actually undertake, for example, you know, senior health care, etc, etc. So, so would it be fair to say that they've got, the, they've got the money to set up the bollards because the central government provided that? but they haven't got the money to do any consultation around it. Well, I, I think you'll find that Devon County Council, um, anybody from Devon County Council is free to rig up in, in, in us in here in the studio and tell us otherwise. But I mean, I think Devon County Council has, for example, consulted because there was a large consultation last September about cycle routes in Exeter. The fact they haven't got any money. Oh, yeah, but Dave, excuse me. I, I appreciate the cycle routes are important, and you can go from the Science Park to the campus, to the city centre, through Hebertry and Whipton, very conveniently. And that is great, but that's not what the people who live in the area... Um, well, I'm just guessing. I mean, I'm, nobody objects to that, but that's not the main priority of the people who live there. I'm sorry to say this. I, I, and I, I say again that, in fact, you know, it's unfortunate in lots of ways that it's heavy tree that has been chosen for this, what is supposed to be an experiment. It's supposed to be an 18 month experiment. What, what I'm saying is that in fact, it, it, they, everybody needs to look at things in a wider context. Do you know, I mean, for example, do you know where, you know, you, you're talking specifically about heavy tree, but let's change the situation and talk about people who live in other parts of the city. So for example, do you know where the majority of new building within the city boundaries is going to take place? Well, what do you th regard as the city boundaries? I, I regard the city boundaries as those designated by the government as being the boundaries of Exeter. Well, it's sort of in this side of the motorway? Well, it goes out to the motorway and not beyond. Well, so, for but, example... But there is building outside the motorway. Yeah, but that's East Devon District Council that are doing that. Well, that's just silly, Dave. I'm sorry. Um... Uh, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I am right. <laughs> I just, John, you happen to live on a, a road which used to be Tyburn Lane, but is now Tyburn Way, and you're just this side of the motorway. Yes. Um, but Tyburn Lane, which becomes a sort of walking space, yeah, goes uh, further than that. Yes, it goes. Uh, it, go, it goes to Pinhoe, actually, which could be a. Which could be considered as a cycle route, I guess, for people. I haven't really got a lot to say about it, but they they haven't they haven't they haven't turned that into a cycle route. But nearly everywhere else is a cycle route. I, I but all I'm all I'm saying, Dave, if you were, if if you were if you were thinking about let's say the convenience shop in Pinhoe and who would go to it, given that 
the other side of the motorway there are no other shops at this time and you told people you're now in district East Devon District Council or you're now in the, within the extra boundary because you've gone this side of the motorway or the other side of the motorway how much sense would it make to them? It wouldn't make any sense at all but then the whole the point that I'm making is that the whole planning thing doesn't make any sense at all for example uh, if, have you been to the Exeter Motel recently and seen the building that's taking place on, on the other side of the roundabout from the Devon Motel? No. Right? That's in Teenbridge. It's got nothing at all to do with Exeter, and yet all that traffic is going to look upon Exeter city centre as being their shopping centre, or their, 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 because the facilities that they're building in these places that they are constructing, as for example with Cranbrook, Cranbrook yet hasn't got a supermarket. It will have a Morrison's by the end of the year, I'm assured. But in fact, at the moment, it doesn't have any shopping centre as such, other than local shops. And people in these straightened times are looking for bargains. They want to come into places like... I'm, I'm not advertising. <laughs> Tesco's or, uh, or Sainsbury's or Asda or Aldi. And those are located... Well, yeah, but from where, from where you're talking, they could go to the, to the, the, the large Tesco's. Yes, they could, but they st that, that means that, of course, they have to come in via the Sandy Gate roundabout. OK. And do you know where, how many houses are going to be built in the Sandy Gate area over the next 20 years? 1,050 houses within the Exeter boundary. Which is, if you've, <laughs> if you've experienced driving down to Exeter services on a Friday afternoon, say, it's not unusual for the traffic to be backed up to Middlemore Roundabout. So the point that I'm making, I think, overall, is that Exeter, can't, Exeter cannot keep on taking in more and more and more traffic. It's got to find ways of actually getting rid of some of the traffic and one of the ways that Devon County Council believes that in fact it ought to do it is by cu cutting areas off or sh closing areas down so that they are, they are it's the 15 minute city concept. Oh, right, now Dave, this is excellent because um, I've come, I, I'm going to sort of take, go, I'm going to interrupt with a little uh, section of my own uh, contribution now I like the idea of the 15 minute city when you find out what it, what it is, but it mostly comes across negatively. In, in social media, and to some extent what you hear on the, on the media, uh, it's a terrible conspiracy by uh, the World Economic Forum or somebody like that. Some, some global organisation is trying to impose the 15 minute city on everybody. Um, but it could be a positive thing. So, um, but maybe that's enough. What have you heard about it that's positive? Well, the, the positive, I mean, I'm, I'm looking again at the figures that are provided by Liverpool Exeter uh, about where building is going to be taking place in the city. Um, it's not going to improve the traffic situation in any sense or form. For example, have you, have you recently had occasion to go down to St David's Station? I have. Have you found the traffic around St David's Station difficult? Uh, it's always difficult. I wouldn't say it's any worse. Do you know how many? Do you know how many new houses are proposed to be built by Exeter City Council in the next twenty-four years? So next twenty years in the Red Cow area. No. Six hundred and four. Good gracious. Right. Yeah. So six hundred and four. Six. Sorry. Six hundred and sixty-four houses. Um, then you start looking at other places like, for example, uh, Northgate and down at the bottom of the, by the Iron Bridge, uh, where the road infrastructure is hardly supportive of um, 21st century traffic, I think you'll agree. But Northgate... It's is, a very nice Iron Bridge. It is, but, but it wasn't designed, it was designed to alleviate um, the cholera outbreak or so to make it easier to get across to St David's when it was built. It wasn't built to take 21st century traffic but the Northgate area around there is going to have another 308 houses in the next 20 years and, and you know you st as I say you start looking around um, <laughs> the university has doubled in size over the last 20 years for example um, you know and so uh, 
the, 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 the situation is pressing. I suggest that what we do is we take another piece of music chosen by John and we come back and debate this further. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> 